today I want to talk about discipline determines your destiny. Discipline is the training of oneself for improvement. Self-discipline is self-improvement. It develops one character, and the result is an efficient life. Self-discipline does not feel good. We would have to say no to some things that we would like to do. We would have to say yes to some things that we don't like to do. Here's the thing. We all must suffer two things. That is the pain of self-discipline or the pain of disappointment. So the choice is all yours. In the book of Proverbs, we've been going through Proverbs, and Solomon has been teaching his son. And it says in Proverbs 5 and 23, Solomon was telling his son that a man who lacked discipline would stumble around in his own stupidity. I want to encourage you today because the price of excellence is discipline and the cost is mediocrity. This is about your life. This is about your heart. And this is about your happiness. It all begins with your discipline. In fact, you cannot do anything without discipline. So you cannot fault someone else and you cannot blame someone else because what that does, that puts you in the blame mode. That puts you in an area that you get stuck. And your future is too important. If you want to go on the road of your happiness, you have to take full responsibility. And that will lead you into the purpose that God has for your life. Every believer can have self-discipline and it will lead to your destiny. Discipline determines your destiny. You, in order to have it, you must first be convicted. Conviction is a firmly held belief. It's an unwavering faith that will help you withstand the temptation to compromise. You don't compromise your conviction. These are non-negotiables. I haven't seen no great example of this And in the book of Daniel, these three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro, these guys were convicted on their belief in our God, the King Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted them to bow down to this golden king, nine foot high, nine feet wide. Everyone bowed down except these three Hebrew boys who were convicted. What about your life? Where do you need to stand and be convicted at? Let's go to the book of Daniel's chapter 3, verse 13. Let's check out these three. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We are not bowing down. If this be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, out of your hand, king. And it says, O king, but if not, let it be known. Come on, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden image that you Hell set up. You see these three young men? They trusted God. And they surrendered their life to God. Let me give you a little example. When they surrendered to God, Nebuchadnezzar got so mad and furious, he threw these two, three boys into the fiery furnace. And as the guard was taking them in there, 
they will burn up. And then when they were thrown in there, the king raised up in amazement. And he asked his advisor, I know we put three boys in there, but I see four. And the advisor said, yes, it was three. And the king said in amazement, but I see four walking around. It seems like it's the hand of God in their life. They are walking around unbound with no scars and they having a good time. The king commanded the boys to come out of the fury fire. And the king bowed down to the king of kings. He said, your Lord is the Lord of lords. Beloved, I want to help you with something. Whenever you are convicted and doing the will of God, people will try to put you in a heated situation. But God is stepping in your, on your behalf and he will bring you out of that situation. I want to come on. I want you to testify. Have you ever been in a heated situation? Because sometime in life, all you got to do is stop being somebody fool and you're the worst person on earth. Come on now. And, and, and what I'm saying is you, you hold your conviction because you know the will of God and God got you. God got you, beloved. Hold on to your conviction. And when you hold on to those convictions, God will bring you through. He's a mighty God. Come on, is he worthy to be praised right now? Some of you right now, you have been in situations in your life and it was fiery and, and it was heated and God brought you through. If he brought you through anything, it, I want you right now where you are, give him some praise. God is worthy to be praised. What about you? Where in your life do you need conviction. Where's that hard stand that you need to take? Maybe you're saying I'm not going to be anybody else doormat today. Take a stand. Maybe you're saying that you're not going to be someone pushover anymore. I'm telling you today, take that stand. Because whenever you get in a heated situation, God got you. These boys were steadfast. The Supreme Court years ago pointed out that the word conviction has three elements. It must be seen, consistent, and unchanged. If you look at the situation, it would seem these young boys understood the book of Exodus and, and verse 20 and, and 3 that we should not bow down and put no man or put any idol before God. It was seen. It was consistent. The, the, the Nebuchadnezzar asked them several times to bow down. And then it, didn't, it, it was unchanged because he at that point turned the heat up and threw them into the fiery furnace. No matter what he did, they were unchanged because they were convicted. We got to have some convictions in our life. If you, if you say you're a tither, we got to be convicted. You just don't tithe when you have some money. When things are tight. Because you're convicted, you still go honor God with your first fruit. Is it seen? Is it consistent? Is it unchanged? Even when we look at our marriage life, which sometimes you got to ask about yourself, uh, ask yourself about relationship. You got to be convicted. That's why we have so many divorces. People are not convicted. We treat our, our marriage like uh, like it's a car or something. You know how your car, when you, when you have your car, it, it started to break down. You got to put it in the shop and it started giving you some problems and, and it's you know, getting a little old and, and it starts, you start spending a lot of money on it, you trade it on in. And that's how we do marriage sometimes. When, when it gets a little old, they start giving you some problems. You start spending a bunch of money. You start saying, look, let me just trade you in. Let me upgrade you. And, and, and you, kept, you got to be convicted that you're willing to stay in no matter what the situation is at that time, if you can. I learned a long time ago, you can keep jumping from job to job, and relationship to relationship. Many times in life, we are trading one problem for another. Ask God, what's your destiny? Get convicted. Because I'm a firm believer that the Bible is my final authority. Many times people get into political issues and they ask me when I'm out and about, and I ask them, what do the word say? The word has to be your final 
authority because you are convicted. You see, you cannot be no chameleon. You, you, you can't be no lizard and just change in every environment that you go to. You go over there to the club, you can drop it like a hot, like they drop it like a hot. You hang around in the hood, you can use slang, you can cuss just like they cuss. You, 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 you be around church people, oh, you can say, oh, hallelujah. You can just speak the whole language that they speak. And you just got to be convicted of, of who you are whenever you go where you are so that you can still understand it. If I'm lining up the will of God, God going to step in and going to be there for me. Who need to be convicted about something in your life? Because I tell you what, beloved, there will be no changes in your life because distraction is going to come when God has commanded you to do your purpose for your life. Discipline determines your destiny. You must be convicted and you must be carving. You have to carve some things out of your life. We all must cut some things out of our life. It might be people, places, or things. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. This is not for the weak-minded believer. And a lot of times we want to hold on to things that are not in our best interest. I remember over the, pan over the pandemic, I gained an additional 30 pounds and, and, and nothing would fit. Three weeks ago, I was 260 pounds. But I got convicted. I was reading the word of God and it was talking about the word conviction. And it was saying that if, unless we convict it, we won't have the discipline to withstand the distraction that come in our life. Something rose up in me three weeks ago. Today, I went from 260 to 239. I've been saying it over the years that I'm going to do better, eat better, and all that. This is what happened. What I was saying back then, I wasn't convicted. But until I got convicted, then I saw some change in my life. You see, I can say this out publicly right now, and I ain't done yet. I want to get down to 210 by Thanksgiving, and that's the gift to myself. I can say it today and say it out loud because I'm convicted. What about you? What, what's that one thing that you can partner with, with me today that you, can get, that you can get convicted about and that you can carve out of your life? If you will, just type it at the bottom. Pastor, I'm going to get convicted about that one thing. Because when you do that, you will see change in your life. Beloved, I've learned that winners embrace discipline because they see it as denying themselves today for a brighter tomorrow. And losers, they see discipline as punishment. Until you get with the first concept as a winner, your life won't change. See, things change for me when I wrap my head around the correct thoughts. It's for us to have a brighter future. Beloved, I wish you would right now just partner up with me today and just type at the bottom, Pastor, I am willing to convict myself about something and carve something out of my life. And, and when, I, when I go around people today, I'm telling you, I've been distracted. I've seen my, my favorite snacks. I've seen my favorite hot wing and fries. I've seen my pizza and all that. And guess what I said? I said no. When you say no, you grow. Now, when you say yes, your butt will grow, your gut will grow, and your pants won't fit no more. I, I want you to partner with me today and just say no. When you say no, your life will grow. You can do it too. And I'm not using myself as a, as a poster child, but I want to say this right here. You may not have the eating issue that I have. It might be another issue. It, 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 it may be another issue, but you need to just say, Pastor, I'm willing to partner up and get convicted about that one thing in my life. And if you're convicted, you will carve some things out and your life will change today. You have to master the thoughts in your mind. And you'll be able to master what's going on in your life. Discipline determines 
your destiny. And I want to read a verse for you to, to help somebody right now to say, Pastor, I can't do it. Well, the word of God said that you can. And turn with me, ride with me right quick. Let's look at Hebrews 11 and 12. It said, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Beloved, God has something in store for your life. And, and, and this is what I like about it. And if you're still not there, if you still don't think you can quit whatever's going on in your life, if you can't quit smoking it, if you can't quit drinking, if you can't, keep say, can't quit saying uh, uh, yes to everything and get your life out of whack, let me help you with something right now. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says, For God gave us not the spirit of fear for this, but of power and love. And discipline, beloved, that's good news right there. God equipment does not include fear. You are God's handiwork. You are God's equipment. It does not include fear. Beloved, God wants you to step up and rise up today because he gave you power to overcome whatever you're facing today. He gave you power to overcome that addiction. He gave you power to overcome that oppressor today. God has given you all of these things, and it was not the spirit of fear. That's solely from the devil. God wants you to step up today, and he wants you to have the spirit of power, and he got love and discipline. God wants to do something mighty in your life. But you got to tell yourself, I am spirit-filled. I am spirit-controlled. And I am going to walk in my destiny that God has for me. Discipline determines your destiny. You must be convicted. You must be carving. And you must be consistent. Consistency is discipline. Because you have to understand perseverance. You have to understand pushing through when you don't feel like pushing through, you have to understand pain. You have to understand that you have a goal ahead of you. No matter what's in front of you, you got to find a way to make things happen. And I have not found a better example of that than reading the good book and looking at Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Because Jesus gave two examples of two builders that had two different mentalities. And if you have the mentality of the wise builder, you will have a wise life. Let's read it right quick. Come on, come on, come on, read with me. It says, this is what Jesus said right here. He says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man who built a house on the rock. And it basically said when the rain fell and the storms came and all that, the house was able to withstand it. But let's talk about this fool right here. And he says, but he said, be like the foolish man who built the house in the sand and the rain fell. And when the rain fell and when the storms came, the man's house had a great fall. Come on now, that's, that's, this is good news right here. Now, Jesus not only giving us an architectural analogy to build a house, he's helping us build our lives. And, and look, look what he pointed out right here. He said there's a difference initially between listening and hearing. You see, you can, when you're talking to people and they, they say, yeah, I got it, and they don't do it, they was not listening. They hear it. See, see listening requires doing. And you've got to understand the people in your life, you keep giving assignments to or whatever, and it ain't getting done. They ain't listening. They just hear you. And he said, you are the wise man who hear it and do something about it. There's a difference between listening and hearing. And he said, if you're going to be wise about your life, you must listen. And do something about it. In James 1 and 22, it says, be doers of the words and not just hear the word. We must do it. In Luke 6 and 48, it says that the wise man, he kept digging deeper. You see, you have two men in the same area. They both are, have, have sand there, but one built on the rock. Because he kept digging, and he kept digging until he got to the rock, and that's where he built his house. 
But the other man, the lazy man, the foolish man was in a hurry. He wanted his stuff prepackaged. He, he, he wanted his stuff all together. He was in a hurry. And there's nothing built on sand that can withstand, withstand the rain and the storm. He was in a hurry. Back in the day in, the, in, in, in Palestine and even when they build skyscrapers, before they go up, the digging must go down. You, you, you got to dig down to the rock. That's why you see so many houses that, that fall into sinkholes and when, when, when the earthquakes come and things come because they're not built on a solid foundation. What about your life today? Is it built on the rock? If it's built on the rock, when the storms come, you'll be able to handle the rain. This is hard work. You got to dig. And a lot of times people don't want to build because it's hard work. I, I made my living like that because a lot of folks don't want to deal with contractors. They don't want to deal with plumbers. They don't want to deal with electricians. They don't want to deal with somebody running off with the money, ain't finished the work. They don't want to deal with the foolishness, the permit office. Oh, my God. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Anyway, I ain't going to get to that today. My point, they don't want to deal with all the struggle. But if I tell you, if you're wise, it will benefit your life. Yes, it's hard work. Anything you do is hard. But are you going to build today on that solid foundation? And that's what God wants you. To, Jesus wants you to work. He, he wants you to dig. He, he wants you to dig. And what you do when you're digging, everything that's not solid, it got to get out your life. Come on now. <laughs> hey, it, it got to get out the way. Sometimes you'll be digging and it, it, it's, a, it's a Coke bottle right there. It got to get out your way. Sometimes you can be digging and it's a stump right there. You got to get through that stump. Jesus wants you to dig so you can get to the rock. Ain't nothing easy. But that sweat, sweat equity in doing it the Lord's way. When you are digging, that means that you're saying, I embrace the concept that nothing ain't easy. Come on, type it at the bottom. Nothing ain't easy, Pastor. You, you embrace that concept. Get it out your mind. It ain't easy. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to be for you. Everybody who say they for you, they ain't for who they say they are. Life ain't easy. But you got you to keep digging. You got to keep digging if you want to get to the rock. Let me ask you today, are you tired of digging? That's the way of life. There's no way around that way. Everybody wanted easy in this microwave society. But if we're going to do it Christ's way, you can really appreciate it when you get to the other side. Digging says that I don't take shortcuts. And you know what? Beloved, God often used people as the shovel. You cannot build a house on the shovel. You can't build your life on the shovel. Now that shovel that we use to dig to get to the rock, that shovel that we use, it causes a lot of sweat. And a lot of the sweat and the pain that we have in our life, the hate that, we, that go, on, go on in your life, is caused by people. The, the resistance sometime in your life is caused by people. The conflict that you have in your life is caused by people. Why and for what reason? Jesus want to help you get to the rock. And you have to focus on getting to the rock. If we don't, we'll lose focus and quit. And as long as that's le leading to somewhere, I'm okay to dig a little bit in life because I know God is in full control of my life. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. This was not a soil issue. This was not an issue about the texture of the land. This was a digging issue. There was nowhere in the Bible that said who had the prettiest house and all that. But it did say that the one who, di who digs, you will get to the rock. See, a lot of people look on the surface. See, the surface, that's that pretty stuff. Oh, I love this chandelier. Oh, that building looks so good. Oh, that house has good cabinets and oh, all that stuff. I have never heard anyone say that's a pretty foundation. A lot of time when you're digging, when you're digging that foundation, people may look at you like you're crazy. A lot of time in life, you got to be willing to do things that people can't see. 
They don't see the digging that you're doing in your life. And sometimes it's not for them to see because that's a commitment between you and the Lord. And when people don't see things in your life, that's okay. It's okay to look like you got a little for a little while to have an abundance for a lifetime. But love, I want to encourage you today to keep digging, to keep digging because God has something great in store for you. Both of them have sand, but only one continue to dig and were consistent in digging to get to the rock. So it wasn't a soil issue. It wasn't the sand issue. And what that means is that you can build a rocky house in sand. <laughs> but you got to keep digging, digging. Hey, look, look, you, you, you might be from Summerall, Mississippi, but if you keep digging, you lean on the rock, you can be anything that you want to be. And God is saying, notice the rock and get beneath the sand because the sand was not the issue. It was the person that was digging. The problem was not with the sand. The problem was with discipline. And I want to encourage you today to fix your problem with the discipline. And you keep digging and you will get to the rock that Christ has for you. Discipline determines your destiny. You must be convicted you must be carving, and you must be consistent. Let me leave you with this. You only grow when you're uncomfortable. And you have to understand when you have this concept that discipline is okay with me. And you understand we all must suffer two things. That's the pain of self-discipline are the pain of regret and disappointment. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power and self-discipline. And winners embrace discipline because they understand denying themselves today leads to a brighter tomorrow. And losers Resist discipline because they see it as punishment. You are a winner, beloved, and Christ wants you to win today. And he wants you to embrace the concept of self-discipline. All successes begin with discipline, and it starts with you. I want you to take this message today. Take one thing that you want to have more discipline about and you get convicted, you carve some things out and you be consistent, beloved. And your life will change today. If you receive the message, let's give God a hand clap for praise. Thank you. God bless. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601 408 7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today.